Right, the GOP's prospects for the November election are stronger than ever, and in part it is thanks to some first-time candidates who are motivated to battle this administration. Now, Dana Perino has the story on one candidate who may just be what the GOP needs. Dana. Thanks, Sean. Damon Dunn is one of those first-time candidates who's joined the GOP's fight to take back the country in November. But he is an unusual candidate in many respects. His road to the Republican Party took him from a trailer in Texas to Stanford University, the NFL, and into the business world. We met him at Stanford. Take a look. We have an administration that comes in and says, you know what, well, in the face of saying that we have three entitlements that are not funded, it would be a good idea to add another entitlement. Now, the CEO of any entity could not get away with that. So why can the government, you know, get away with that? The Obama administration has a formidable critic on the West Coast. Damon Dunn is California's GOP candidate for Secretary of State. He has spent just nine months on the campaign trail, but he's already turning heads. He is also amassing an impressive group of supporters, from former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown to former California Governor Pete Wilson. This is someone who is a real American success story. I mean, a real bootstrap story. But Damon's entry into politics was not fated. In fact, given the circumstances of his childhood, it was downright unlikely. I grew up incredibly poor. My mom had me at um, 16 years old. My father was killed when I was three. And uh, we lived 10 people in a three bedroom trailer. My uncles that I grew up with, one went to prison for murder, one went to prison uh, for armed robbery. So I didn't have a lot of uh, great role models. Damon learned early in life that lifting himself out of poverty would require him to take his education seriously. Education was my golden ticket uh, to an opportunity to have a changed life. Not going to college was not an option. That was instilled in him very early on in life. But it was a surprising source that instilled in Damon the value of education. The turning point in my life um, happened when I was 12 years old. And uh, I was being a cut up in class and the teacher kicked me out of class and I was sitting outside and I was eating a lollipop. And this old janitor walks by and he's pushing his bucket, right, with a mop. And uh, he stops, he looks at me, and he says, young man, what are you doing out here? And I was embarrassed, so I didn't say anything because I had a lollipop in my mouth. And he said, look in that classroom and tell me what you see. And I looked in there and I looked back at him and he says, you know what I see in there? I see a, a bunch of kids in there learning how to be your boss. And uh, that impacted me so profoundly uh, because I didn't want anyone to ever be my boss. And from that point on, moving forward, you know, I started to commit myself, you know, to being good in class. Outside the classroom, Damon excelled on the football field. We saw very early on that Damon had talent and he used that talent. He was very hardworking when everyone else left the field. He was practicing. So football has been a way that opened some doors for him. Politics was far from his mind but his experiences in childhood would come to shape his political beliefs. It was very obvious to me that, you know, the government could be a safety net, but never a trampoline, right? They weren't gonna spend me into the middle class, right? That was gonna take individual effort. It was the effort Damon exerted in sports that caught the attention of the man who would change his life. As the number two ranked wide receiver in the state of Texas, he was recruited by colleges and universities around the country. A guy by the name of Bill Walsh uh, came to my home and basically made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. Uh, Coach Walsh told me, listen, son, if you are good enough to play in the NFL, I can make one phone call and I'll put you in the NFL. And in addition to that, uh, you can get an education uh, that's the best education in the world. And you can still accomplish all of your dreams, uh, even if you don't uh, succeed in football. Damon arrived at Stanford in the fall of 1994. When I come to Stanford and kids wanted to be CEO of Fortune 500 companies. They wanted to be president of the United States. They wanted to be Supreme Court. It was just amazing. And it caused my ambition to grow. Completely changed my life. It was at Stanford, Damon says, that he first began to understand what it meant to him to be a conservative. Growing up, I always identified uh, with being a Democrat. Sure. You know, everyone in my neighborhood uh, were Democrats. Uh, no Republicans ever came to my neighborhood. I honestly never met a Republican I could trust. And uh, it wasn't until I got to Stanford University and I met Condoleezza Rice and I met the very first Republican that I could trust. But at the same time, I've always been conservative. You know, I've always been fiscally conservative. I've never not been fiscally conservative. But I never had anyone come to me and share uh, what it means to be conservative. Damon found success both in academics and athletics. Anytime you come from a, a background that's deprived of so many things, 
it makes success so much more valuable. It's so much more desirable, so much more fulfilling. And I think what was wonderful about Damon is that he was able to keep that in balance. Stanford University football coach Tyrone Willingham also filled a void in Damon's life. I grew up without a father, and um, I was always hungry for that, um, for someone that I could identify with. And when I got to Stanford University, uh, Tyrone Willingham came in my sophomore year, and he was a man of impeccable integrity. And I just admired him and respected him so much. Under Willingham's direction, Damon set school records for the longest kickoff return for a touchdown, most kickoff returns for a touchdown, and the highest return average. As Bill Walsh had promised him when he was a high school senior, Damon headed to the NFL after his graduation. When I heard that he was playing pro, uh, I thought, you're not big enough to play pro. Damon played four years in the NFL for the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Cleveland Browns, the New York Jets, and the Dallas Cowboys. My very first day, I realized that was much different than Stanford. Uh, there was a guy, I won't, won't say his name, but I, was, uh, I dropped two balls in practice the very first day. And uh, this guy was making five million a year. And uh, he came over to me and said, Damon Doug, you're dropping Benzes. You're dropping Mercedes Benzes. You better catch that money. Damon was a below average NFL player. And that did not sit well with him. He left the league and together with his college roommate, Chad Hagel, he started a small real estate business. It was the lessons he learned in that endeavor that would come to shape his political thinking. We created jobs, we balanced budget, we made payrolls, you know, we took risk and we made profits, you know, we sustained losses uh, and we learned prudence. He found that government served primarily as a roadblock and this is the sentiment he shares on the campaign trail. It's the normal course of business for a business owner to say, you know what, I have money, I want to go out and invest in the American people. I believe that I can build some product and I believe that I can, you know, build it at some price and sell it for some price greater. And that's uncertain. That's normal business risk. But when the government gets involved and they start to create uncertainty, you can no longer be the determiner of your own fate. California is bleeding jobs and it's suffering from crushing debt. It's Damon's business experience that has won him prominent supporters throughout the state. He understands that generating jobs and income for other people is the way to help them and to help their families. Damon Dunn, given his experience in uh, business and given his experience as a professional athlete with his inspiration and his ability to communicate, I think can make a dent on some of those problems. His experiences have given him insight, not just into athletics, business, or politics, but into America itself. I can live 10 people in a three bedroom trailer, slopping hogs and feeding cows and getting up every morning and, and doing that every single day. But then I can go on and transcend and go to Stanford University and end up owning my own small business. See, that's the American dream. It's about what the individual can achieve, assuming that you can start where you are, that you can use what you have, and that you can do what you can until you, the individual, accomplish a part of the American dream. That's why people move to this country. They don't move here for our entitlements. They move here for freedom.